My name is Patricia, Anne with an E, please. Jean Coor. Well, let's take, change that. Mm -hmm. Let's start with Patricia Anne Jean Ebley Coor. Uh, Patsy Ann was my mom's favorite doll. I was born January 17th, you really want the year? 1951 at Cameron Hospital in Ryan, Ohio. My name is Jeffrey James Benedict Poor. Um, I don't really have a nickname. The only name I chose or that I am aware of uh, is the Benedict, which was my confirmation name. Occasionally, my wife Patty will call me Jay just to shorten up Jeff. Jay, can you get this for me or can you, that kind of a thing. So I think probably the most important thing to me is family. That's something that uh, I always grew up with. Um, something that Patty and I always tried to um, make first and foremost with, you know, we've, we've got five kids. Uh, they all live within a couple miles of us. So to me, it's all about family. So Jeff was attending Divide Word, Divine Word Seminary. I was at Bedford High School, but we both were parishioners of Mount Carmel Parish in Temperance. I graduated from the eighth grade at St. Joe's in Erie, and there was eight of us in that, eight guys in that class that went to the seminary. Three guys went up to Detroit to a diocesan seminary, and uh, five of us went to Divine Word Seminary in Perrysburg, Ohio. Uh, it no longer exists. It's now called the Sanctuary, where big, beautiful homes have been built. At any rate, uh, so it was a boarding school. You went there as a freshman. You, there'd be a break at uh, Thanksgiving and another break at Christmas. And then you come back just like any other school. And, and so we would live there, and uh, I did that for two years, freshman and sophomore year, and at the end of my sophomore year, I decided I didn't really want to go back. My parents were okay with that. So we were members of Our Lady of Mount Carmel Parish, and uh, the CYO had an annual event that they took a bus trip to Cedar Point. I was secretary of the CYO, um, and every summer they go out to Cedar Point, run a bus, fill it up, and go to Cedar Point for a day. So my name appeared in the church bulletin to contact me if you were interested and um, figure out how to make the payments, yada, yada. At which point Jeff called me one day at home, and I didn't know him from the man of the moon. He just said, want to make reservations, go on the bus. I said, okay. He said... I said, how many? He said, uh, two. I said, okay. He said, so I needed both their names. He said, he said another person, a woman, a girl, a teenager. I said, okay. So then took his reservation and then there was a CYO meeting and I think it was just the officers and the president. Um, I said, so this Jeff Cora called, he wants to go. Do you know him? He's well, yeah, I know him. He, 3B baseball, yada, yada. I said, oh, okay. I said, he's bringing so-and-so, and -so in. he said, I don't know her. I said, okay. I said, okay, and he said, why are you asking these questions? I said, I don't know, I just didn't know him from the church. Never. He's never been at a CYO meeting. I said, trying to figure out the connection. He said, okay, I said, well, you're gonna meet him a couple weeks when we go to Cedar Point. I said, okay, fine. I had a name to call. I called this name, and it turns out to be my wife now and said to her that, uh, hey, a buddy and I would like to go on this trip. Is that okay? And she said, sure. And I said, okay. I said, and there'll be one more person. So there was a girl my age that lived across the street from me in Temperance that I played baseball with her brother. And I said, would you like to go to Cedar Point for the day, you know? So I, she joined me. So there was my buddy, Gary, myself, and this girl, Debbie, that lived across the street. There was nothing there. It was just 
want to go and hang out and have fun kind of thing, go on all the rides. Well, as we arrived and we got registered in and um, this young lady was there taking our name and taking our information and whatever. And We go to Cedar Point. I'm with a friend, a guy friend. I take that back. I went with a girlfriend, but we had a mutual boyfriend. And so he was um, kind of hanging out with Sharon and I, at which point he became a little possessive of me. And Sharon said, oh my God, he really likes you. What are you going to do? And I said, no, 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 no. At which point Jeff and -and so-and-so are kind of with us, at which point we get in line for a ride and Jeff puts so-and-so on one side of the bar, puts himself, Sharon and I, on this side. So... Um, a boy and a girl over here, and then it's Jeff, Sharon, and myself over here, at which point when the ride stopped, he said, let's take off fast. So three of us took off, and he wasn't with her the rest of the day at Cedar Point. That's pretty much how it started. (laughs) 15, 16 years old, 16, 17. Yeah. He was conniving even back then. As the day progressed, we we hung out with her and her friend, which was, turns out, Patty and her friend Sharon, uh, Gary, myself, and this girl that came with me. And as the day progressed, Gary started hanging out with Debbie, and I started hanging out with Pat, and there would be five of us together doing different things all day long, and it kind of evolved from there. (laughs) So high school, turns out, high school sweethearts. Besides conniving. Oh. Are we going to edit this at all? Yes, yes. No. <laughs> um, he was very sweet. He was very, he was a gentleman. Um, he was cute, very athletic, played all the sports. Um, I didn't know hockey from the man on the moon. I learned hockey real fast. Same thing with lacrosse and soccer. Um, but he was at the seminary, right? So I'm thinking, I'm, I'm with this priest. <laughs> How was that even, <laughs> you know, something's wrong. He told his parents shortly thereafter that summer that he was not going back to the seminary, wanted to go to St. Francis. She's uh, extremely organized. Um, I've always said that she gets 100% of the credit for raising the kids. We are fortunate and blessed to have five kids all of which are healthy and graduated from college and have healthy relationships with their own, married with their own families now. And she deserves all that credit because I was always working, trying to provide for the household and do whatever and run the business. And uh, she's very loving, very organized. um, And yeah, I mean, she rules the roost. I've always said, I don't wear the pants in the family. She does. <laughs> what did you, when you like knew you were falling in love, like, when was that moment for you? When was it? Um, probably after a few months of dating. Um, so it had been most of the summer of 68. Does that sound right to you? 69. 68. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. It was 68. Um, um, yeah, it was pretty fast. He was just a nice guy, very respectful, did all the things that a guy should do, open the door, pull the chair, just was raised right and treated me like a queen. To this day, thank you. <laughs> what you demand. <laughs> well, then there's that, I guess, but, you know, that wasn't nice. <laughs> I'm teasing you. <laughs> and how about you? Um, well, I never really had a girlfriend or anything. Uh, those first two years of high school being in the seminary. Um, so when we met and that particular day progressed, I found myself being drawn to her and as Weeks after that day went on, I kept wanting to 
speak to her, to see her, to... So I, I guess uh, it didn't take long to figure out this is the special person I want to be with. I'm not sure that I had a career. I mean, I was in the business field right out of high school, didn't go to college, um, managed uh, back in the day. They had telephone offices where you'd go and sign up to have your landline installed, make your payments there. So I was a business manager at uh, the local general telephone and electric company way back in the day. I graduated from St. Francis. Uh, I had an opportunity to go to Michigan Tech to play hockey. Uh, I did not want to do that. I was not a great student. I just, that was just not something I enjoyed was being in school. Um, if I could have gone to Michigan Tech and just played hockey, that would have been my dream. <laughs> um, but I always enjoyed working with my hands. So out of the 130 of us that graduated from St. Francis that year, I was probably the only one that never went to college. Became a tool and die apprentice and uh, went through that. It's a four year commitment program and go through that and then you graduate into becoming a tool and die maker. I did that and uh, in doing so, the company would send me out of town frequently when they started up new jobs and new programs. And consequently, I would go and assist with that startup or if there was a small problem, take care of that problem kind of a thing. Um, and one time I was uh, sent to Centralia, Illinois. So I flew from Detroit to St. Louis and then rent a car and go to this plant. And they had been trying to get this mold up and running and could not get it done and taken care of at all. They had worked on it for days. So that was Rockwell International. Rockwell called my company that I worked for, was Modern Tools, and said, can you send somebody down there and help us get this thing going? We're having all kinds of fits. So I went in there, flew on a Sunday, Went in there first thing Monday morning. They explained to me what the problem was. I asked if I could do this or that to solve the problem. They said, yes, you can. If you think that'll solve it, yes, you can do that. I said, okay. About an hour and a half later, I said, okay, I'm all done. You can't be done. Well, yeah, it's, it's ready to go. Let's put it in the press and let's mold parts. Now, we've been working on this thing for days, in and out of the press, you can't be done that fast. I said, well, I really am. Well, then just polish it up or do something so it looks like you're busy. Because we can't fly somebody down here in an hour and a half, be done. I said, okay. So I did that till noon, at which point I went to lunch. I said, I'm going back to the hotel, get it in the press and start running parts. And if you have a problem, let me know. I'm only, the hotel was a couple miles away. Call me, this is the room I'm in and I'll come in and take care of it. I never heard anything. The next morning I came in and they had hundreds and hundreds of parts. Everything worked out fine. So they called me into the office and they asked me if I wanted a job. I said, I have no interest in living in Centralia, Illinois, which is out in the middle of nowhere. I said, no, I've, I've got a family quite content with where I'm at. So they said, well, think about it, whatever, we'll get back with you. So I flew home, went back to my shop where I was working and company and explained to them what happened. And turns out a couple days later, I got a phone call from the vice president of the organization, which was located in Troy, Michigan. That's where their headquarters for the plastics division was for Rockwell International. Turns out it's, I know this man. I played hockey with his son. <laughs> he said, Jeff, I'd like to talk to you. Come on up and sit down with me. So I took a day off of work. I went up, sat down with him. He said, tell me how much you're making and I'll make you an offer that's more than that for you. Include all your overtime and everything else. And I was trying to think. I was, uh, I think I was 26 years old. So we went through all that and they were hiring young engineers that just graduated from college uh, 
at 22, 23 years old, and I was making about twice as much money as they were, and they were not happy about that. <laughs> but they couldn't do what I could do, and I couldn't necessarily do what they were doing either. So, But that's kind of how my career got started. Always liked numbers. Like I probably should have been an accountant. Um, so just uh, always an administrative type role, I guess. And then uh, five kids started happening. Well, four, and then 10 years later, number five. So um, I was home. I was managing the house because uh, my husband traveled a lot and was not necessarily there a lot. So went from a little bit of office stuff to the home, which better be an organizer there, you know? And then once we opened the business, I was, um, I was a person that was in charge of everything that you could go to jail for, from HR to the insurances to the payroll. Mess up any of those things and you could be in big trouble, right? So that was, and I was cheap at the time when we first opened the doors, we really couldn't afford a lot of help. My career has been a lot of Excel spreadsheets, which when the kids see this, will laugh because we've already determined that my monument will have an Excel spreadsheet on it. Somehow, I'm not sure what will be listed on there, but there will be an Excel spreadsheet because I have it for the 27 of us, you know, to keep track of birthdays and gifts. And They hired me. We moved up to uh, Orchard Lake, Michigan. And... Um, Settled in there and I worked for Rockwell for about two and a half years and then went back to the company that I had come from, Modern Tools, which was a division of Libby Owens Ford, and uh, went back there working in the office in, in the sales group. Um, from there, I, we did that for, I guess it was about four years. And um, after two or three years, they promoted me to the sales manager, and I would go out and call on all the customers and what have you. My One of my mentors was in sales and was in the office across from me and would say to me, Jeff, why don't we do this on our own? We can do this. I said, I can't do this, Bob. I, at that time, I think I was probably uh, 29, 30 years old, 31 years old, and he would bounce this off of me every, I don't know, six months or something. And uh, he finally asked me one day after I was having some frustrations at work and said, uh, what do you say we do this? We can do this. You get the work in, I'll get the work out. Like I said, he was one of my mentors. He was 17 years older than I was. I said, I think we can do this. Let's, I'll put together a package and we'll go to a bank, we'll talk to the bank and go from there. We did all that. Uh, we talked to the bank, the bank agreed to provide us with a loan and we rented a small space out of a building in Temperance, Michigan. And that's how Belker started. And the Belker is, uh, my partner's name was Bob E. Livingston. Our name is, last name is K-U-H-R. We took out the H and to balance it, and it became Belker. And um, I literally went out and got the work, and uh, he was an excellent, excellent die maker and, and uh, very, very handy. And we, he, he would get the work out. We started hiring people. We, we had people working for us the first day on a part-time basis. So eventually became full-time and we were very, very fortunate and very blessed and turned out to be very successful. Well, our oldest, Jenny, was uh, in eighth grade getting ready to start Notre Dame Academy um, when Jeff and his partner decided now's the time to do what we've talked about for so long. There's a lot of customers in the business that Jeff was sales manager of another company. He said, I keep turning away this work and it's, it's fixing stuff after they've already made it. Somebody needs a repair or a small change. He said, we're losing a lot because I keep turning stuff away. So he and his partner determined now would be the good time to open our business and take on that load. At which point 
um, sat down, ran the numbers, said, okay, let's go to a bank and see what they think. And I just sat there thinking, we have a daughter with tuition at Notre Dame Academy. The other three were in grade school, private school. So I'm thinking, I, you know, I was petrified, but also confident because Jeff had already talked to some of the customers, said they had worked for him, would not take away from the company that he was employed at. It's just additional stuff that we need somebody to do, and we don't have anybody to do it right now. So um, it was scary, but we never, never looked back. We, an income happened immediately. We, he had done his homework. He knew exactly what we were doing. So, yeah, it was, it was a challenge, you know, from just having like 40 employees, and they all have different grievances, and they don't like something all the time. So, but when we sold the business that was probably the worst part also is that we missed all these people that had been with us most of the entire time so it was it was good for us I mean family never would have been blessed like we are had we not taken that chance so yeah it's a good thing first of all I take tremendous pride in being able to start a business from the ground up have it be very successful, uh, and my partner, the Bell, if you will, Bob, we started in 1985, he retired 10 years later uh, at 60 years old, so we bought him, my wife and I bought him out, and then we had the business on our own for another 18 years after that, because we were 28 years in business before we sold it. So I take tremendous pride in the fact that we started this business from the ground up, went through the transition of leadership, total leadership from having two people run the company to now just one with all the support in the world from Patty. Um, and and the, the pride continues knowing that when we sold it in 2012, it still exists today and is, continues to be very successful. It's all about working hard and being dedicated and staying focused. And yeah, we, we had some challenging times, but we, we always made money. We, uh, the biggest, some of the biggest concerns I always had was because I was responsible for the administration side and the sales side, and he would take care of the shop. So all, we eventually ended up with 40 some employees, 42 employees, he would take care of managing all of them and the work, you know, making sure the work got out on time. Um, my concern was, because in, in that kind of a business, it takes forever to get paid. You always do get paid, but it could be, it's not like 30 days later or something. It, uh, it started out, we were doing just repair work, which, which made money uh, 60 days out kind of a thing. So we would do the work, 60 days later we would get paid. As we progressed, uh, we became a bank for the General Motors, Fords, and Chryslers of the world because you would design and build a new program and you could have millions of dollars invested in it and you wouldn't get paid until that program got launched for production. Consequently, the tooling always had to be done six months, five, six months prior to when production would start, because they would go through their testing and all kinds of things on these vehicles. Well, it also took six months to build it, so you, you have millions of dollars invested uh, for basically a year before you got paid. So you basically, you're bankrolling the GMs, Fords, and Chryslers of the world. But it all worked out. It all worked out, and like I said, we were very, very blessed and happy and fortunate. I'm much more a follower than a leader. We've got a leader here. I have a few leaders in my children, but I prefer to take the back seat and let somebody tell me. But then when I think I know what I'm doing, you might want to get out of the way <laughs> because then I, I kind of tend to want to do things my way and in my time. And so lead by example also. I mean, I just sit back and watch everybody else and if I 
like what they're doing, then I figure I don't have anything to improve what they've already established, so let's just go with the flow, you know. In terms of leadership, I I, I think the um, best way to lead is by example. We always made sure that we were there on time, that we stayed all day, that we did what we had to do, that so people didn't treat it as, well, you know, there's just a small business. We can kind of come and go as we please, or we can do whatever. We we didn't allow that. We stayed right with it. Now, after time, we certainly were able to take more time off because the business was running, and we had people in charge and and things like that, and it made it much easier. But uh, I guess the big thing is, is I believe in leading by example. Um, started when the oldest kids were at St. Anthony's in Temperance, and I was on the PTA board. Notre Dame Academy, been on numerous boards over there. The Croswell Opera House up in Adrian, I've done a lot with them. Um, I've chaired lots of things over at St. Francis de Sales. I've chaired a few things over at Lourdes. The local tool companies had a chapter from the NTMA, which is the National Tooling and Machining Association, which was headquartered in Washington, D.C. area. Um, I was president of that in one year that, you know, I went through some chairs and became president of that organization. And there was 30 some, 35 tool and die companies that were part of this local organization. And then uh, the University of Toledo and Marcy Captor partnered together to try and develop uh, a skilled trades area because she knew that that was lacking. And that was, I forget what year that was, but it was in 94, five kind of a thing. And uh, the University of Toledo had a building built on their campus. And I was the inaugural chairman of that. At that time, that was called the NCTPC, National Center for Tooling and Precision Components. And I was the inaugural chairman of that organization. For the most part, that's a handful of things that we feel very, I feel very Christ Child Society. It's about the kids, you know, so those are the things that we've, I've been mostly involved in, so. And wouldn't change a minute of any of it, loved it all. We always supplied hams to the employees at Christmas time, uh, so each employee would get a eight, nine pound honey baked ham to take home to their families for Christmas kind of a thing. I mean, we, we ran a, uh, what I always refer to as a nice little company. I mean, we, we were very generous with the employees. We paid them very well. Uh, we had 401k profit sharing program where we would always put money into it for them. They could also put money from their paychecks in kind of a thing. And it ranged our contribution to them ranged anywhere from 3% to 15% of their total wages. So they uh, they received 15% on a couple, several different times, uh, 6% on multiple times, and and sometimes just 3%. But they in the 28 years that we had it, we always contributed to it. Um try to give back to the community. I mean, we're very um, involved in numerous things in the community. Would hope that my children would pass that on to their grand, to their children also. Um, positive, just be kind. That's, that's all anybody's saying right now, you know, just be kind and supportive of everybody, you know, and accept everyone. That would be That'd be really nice. I'd love to see that in my lifetime. I'm not sure it's going to happen, but. Trust, uh, lead by example, and keep your word. If they said they needed it by such and such a date, and I promised to get it to them by that date, I had to make sure that we, as a team, as a company, delivered. Moved a few times. Every time we moved, got pregnant. So when we moved here, I said, we're never moving again. 
I wasn't going to chance it, right? At which point, the, the builder was here. We were out looking for homes. The builder was here upstairs, and there's a, a retreat area off the master bedroom. He says, this be a great place for a little nursery. I said, no, no. Four, we're done. We're moving, but we're not going to get pregnant again. Well, 40 and pregnant. And so every home that we've ever been in, we have had a child. That is a little strange. We've been here 35 years. You understand why now. <laughs> she deserves all the credit for raising the kids. Um, my parenting didn't come until a little bit later, I guess, as, as things became a, more opportunistic for us. Um, I guess my idea of the parenting aspect of it was uh, respect and discipline. We have Jennifer Lynn, Jenny, uh, January 24th. We have, well, all the kids were born at St. Vincent's here in Toledo. Uh, second one is Robert James. He's October 25th. Christine Marie is January 12th. Stephanie Ann is March 12th. And Brittany Elizabeth is May 2nd. I was 40 and pregnant. Jenny's the oldest, it's the first, and uh, um, I guess the initial thing, the memory is, is learning to be a parent. I mean, we don't go to school for that. We don't have classes in that. We, It's kind of a learn-as-you-go kind of a thing, and, and I guess that's a big thing to me. Special things, I mean, I can remember going away to college, and that was, she went away to John Carroll in Cleveland. Once again, very first, right? So we helped her move, obviously, and all that. And Patty was uh, not happy to have her go that far away, even though it was only a couple hours, but uh, it was pretty traumatic. Um, I'd like Rob to remember that when he was like four or five, he just started playing hockey. He maybe had been playing a little bit. Hadn't scored a goal, so I wrote a note and pinned it inside his jersey. Today's your day to get your first goal. He scored a goal that day. Um, I think the, everybody would agree is our wild child. And we lived in a bi-level in Temperance. Back of the couch, um, there were windows, a, a ledge, and then the windows. It was summertime and she decided to run away. She put on winter boots, she had a diaper on, and she grabbed a summer cover-up, put it on, a, a bathing suit cover-up is what I mean, pushed out the screen and took off down the street. And one of somebody saw her go through this and was watching it, at which point they said, uh, Mom, Stephanie's walking down the street down there. So I went out and just did the right, you know, I'm calling her. She turns around, looks at me and continues to shake her head no, at which point she finally decided she would return to the homestead. Brittany being the youngest, um, a lot more memories there. They're certainly more recent. <laughs> um, but yeah, just special child, just everything about her. I mean, she was the baby, she is the baby. Uh, and they can share stories amongst themselves when on a you know Sunday dinner or something. Well, you didn't let us do that. Why does Brittany get to do that? Or why did she be allowed to do this or that? And things were just different, I guess. Uh, we were starting out very young. Um, we're about to celebrate 50 years of marriage. Um, I got married at 18 years old. Blessed to still be together and everything, and we're very happy. Um, most days, I think. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's just, as time, with Brittany being the youngest, as time went on, we were in a little different situation in our life. We, we weren't trying to make things happen. They had happened, kind of a thing, for the most part. Christy, Miss Perfectionist, uh, one day, uh, Jenny and Rob were getting on the school bus 
And as I was looking out the window, I didn't see Christy and I thought she usually got on last, which point I thought something was wrong. So I went out to the garage and Christy was hiding in the back of our station wagon because she had a test, but she wasn't sure she did it right. And she was afraid to go to school because she might not get a hundred, which point also followed up with the teacher who said, honest God, every time there's something going on, she comes up to us. Am I doing this right? Am I doing this right? She said, we need to get her out of that. I said, okay, what a challenge. <laughs> um, parenting, I was, I was young and stupid with Jenny. Um, young and stupid like she went to bed with the biggest no-no in the world and that was Kool-Aid in a bottle. We all paid the price afterwards at the dentist for that. That was really, um, obviously by the time you're 40 and pregnant, um, uh, like to think you know a little bit more. The first four, there was 5.30 dinner every night. It was meat, potatoes, salad, roll, and a dessert. I mean, it was, um, with Brittany, that didn't happen. <laughs> you know, it was, and they always had to clean their plate. I mean, you're not getting up until you've, I fix this food, you're gonna eat it, you need it. At which point, Brittany came along and it's like, if she couldn't finish those potatoes, why do I care? She doesn't really need them. But then the other kids are all sitting there, time out, do you remember do you remember, you know, it's, yeah, but guys, it's, you know, some things just really aren't worth the fight and I'm that much smarter now and got to cut me some slack here too, you know? So, um, I, I'm glad I did it when I did it as opposed to today, as I watch everybody struggle with so many things, you know, from the, the, um, screen time that they don't want their young kids to do. And yet, that was a babysitting tool for a lot of us. Um, thank God for Sesame Street and the grandkids. I think my kids are too hard at my grandkids. That'll go over big. <laughs> um, I'd like to see them cut some slack sometimes. I think they're really, they expect perfection. There is not perfection out there. Um, and I say that in jest because I think I really do have some Okay, so we didn't say to have tissues here, did we? Um, some pretty cool grandkids. They're all very caring. They, they do some stupid things. But all in all, they're sweet. They know to be kind and to give back. I hope if there's one thing I want them all to know, you give back to the community, time, talent, treasure, you know. If you have one but you don't have the other, it doesn't matter. You, you can figure out something, some way to give back to your church, your community, your neighbors. And I would hope that they have seen that in us. It's way too small when everybody decides to be there at the same time over the 4th of July. It's bursting. Um, but because of our love for Mackinac and that side of the state and the lake, um, we had gone up there many summers and or winters, rented a place with the kids either skiing or just hanging out. So we'd always said that we wanted to maybe purchase up that way. So in 96, um, we were up there on vacation and Jeff made the mistake of going golfing with Rob and we girls were set free to walk the towns. And as I'm walking Petoskey, I see in one of the storefronts this ad um, advertisement for a new community, Bay Harbor. So I went in, talked to somebody about it, set up an appointment for the next day to meet over there at which point yeah that was a very expensive round of golf for Jeff because we ended up buying yeah that's been that's been a little piece of heaven for everybody um it's 
it's, it's perfect. Ended up getting a boat, and so we boat on Lake Michigan and Little Traverse Bay, and um, it's, it's a good place to go to get away from stuff. Probably that all the kids have chosen to live close. I mean, everybody's within a couple miles. So the fact that everybody is that close and that they enjoy being together on Sunday dinners, that they don't find it a chore or, man, we have to do this again, you know? And I think the pandemic certainly helped with all that and everybody missed the hugs and the, you know, not that personalities don't conflict from time to time. And, you know, I'm not so happy with so-and-so right now because of something, but they love and support, you know, might not like somebody from time to time, but everybody loves and supports. So um, I hope that that would continue long after I'm not here. I've already threatened them that I have no idea what kind of power I will have up there once I finally get there, but they'll know that mom's not happy if there's anything huge going on between them all. So it's wonderful. We uh, we've been blessed with 15. Number 16's on the way. I take great deal of pride in starting a business and having it for 28 years, selling it after someone approached us. It wasn't on our radar screen, but as the old Godfather movie goes, they made us an offer we couldn't refuse. Um, <laughs> show me the money, right? <laughs> It worked out very well. Um, so certainly great pride in that. And once again, I have to go back as I started and it's with family. We're very, very fortunate and blessed. And I know I'm repeating myself, but the fact of the matter is, is that our kids, though they have differences of opinion from time to time, they all pretty much get along and like one another. And everybody seems to get along. And I, I think that's crucial. And once again, again, I give, I truly give Patty the credit for that. I really do. She, she did that. What are you most thankful for? Oh, my husband. Always be honest. Always be truthful and once again, respectful and maintain discipline. And if you do those couple, three things, uh, you'll, chances are you'll be very happy and probably very successful. For the kids, our kids, I would say, do everything you can to remain positive and remain very close. Um, it can be a challenging world out there we're not going to be here all the time to help out, to do whatever. You're going to need to depend on and rely on one another from time to time. Though you may have differences of opinion occasionally, do your very best to work those out and stay close. Um, I think that's a, a, a key component that you could suggest to grandchildren as well. Uh, in their immediate families, as well as with one another. Uh, once again, fortunately for us, the cousins, our grandkids, if you will, they all like each other, they all play with each other. You know, there are some that are not of the same age, but those that are, they all get along. They come out here in the backyard and throw the ball around, do whatever. And we have uh, 10 grandsons and, well, 11 grandsons and four granddaughters so that's the 15 and the surprise is yet to be known um humor that's my go-to all the time mm -hmm. things get too serious i try to find something to kind of level it off a little bit and um a little bit of give and take i try to take more than I give but sometimes then he pulls back so yeah, I think if people just be a little more patient maybe and 
and talk. When there's a problem, talk about it. Don't let it just keep building and building. Um, but yeah, my go-to is always the humor thing. Just got to try to find something funny and lighten things up and then move on. So. I think we stayed together this long because I always say yes, dear. <laughs> it's <laughs> We've been, once again, so fortunate and blessed. We, uh, we communicate well. We get along very well. We, I try to do whatever it is that she's after uh, and treat her special. And I think it's worked. So far, so good. <laughs> We're not there yet. Got another, yeah, a few months, yeah, couple a couple months, months right. ago. So, yeah. <laughs> the jury's still out, <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, hard working, devoted to his family, he loves those kids and, and grandkids. Um, um, and he's kind. I'll tell the kids, like, we'll be talking about something, and he'll say, well, I really think we should. And it was something, like, something really, really nice, and I'm thinking, I wouldn't have gone there had you not brought it up. He, he really is a much kinder person than I am. It sucks to say that, but, <laughs> um, yeah, he has a huge heart. That pretty well sums it up. Go ahead, tap that one, dear. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> I love going you, first. <laughs> yeah, they really made it very difficult, John. <laughs> um, I overheard her say earlier that she doesn't like being a leader, that she's the follower. Well, in fact, in all honesty, I guess, uh, she leads very much, but in a quiet way. Uh, not the forceful one and beat the drum and out in front of the pack. More of kind of a silent majority, if you will. I mean, she makes suggestions to people. 99% of the time, they're good suggestions. They follow those plans. Um, and it's, I mean, she, she suggests that I might be the kinder one, but uh, sometimes I, can get a little short-tempered and she has to calm me down. And, um, she's done a good job of that. Okay. There you <laughs> that go. That works for you, that does. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> um, probably that he's so giving and when Elizabeth says, Pappy, build me a bookshelf, he might groan a little bit. Like, I've been out in the garage building new stuff for days and I have to build enough. But he wouldn't hesitate, at which point Elizabeth walks in and says, Happy? At which point, I mean, we we have seven grandsons play hockey. We're at, well, before this last year, we were at ice rinks. We, we would leave Columbus and drive up north, not real far, Detroit area for somebody else's hockey game because they were in a, a playoff type situation. So I guess, that I, he, I mean, I think that's more a grandma, Mimi type thing to do than lots of grandpas who would rather be doing something else possibly. But it's, you know, say, okay, we're gonna run down to Columbus, be there for the nine o'clock morning game. We'll stop, grab lunch someplace, and we're gonna try to get up to Mitch's, whatever, and so we, and he's always right there. It's, yeah, let's do that. That sounds great, you know? So his willingness to, to do everything for with the kids. I think that's twofold. I think that goes both ways. Uh, you say my willingness, but you've always been willing to do that too. I mean, we've left here on a Sunday afternoon to drive to Cincinnati for a game at seven o'clock, turn around, drive back home again for one of the grandkids, one of the grandsons that's playing hockey. I mean, we've, we've done some little crazy things that a lot of people wouldn't necessarily do. <laughs> Drive six hours for a one hour game. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a willingness on both sides uh, to be very involved with the grandkids. Um, and I, I think to this day, they appreciate it. Some of it would go back to 
Okay, I need a tissue again. Dang it. Um, when Brittany was little, you know, I would ask the older siblings, any friends you bring in here have to tolerate this little shit, you know? So you have to make that work. When Brittany was a freshman, she became friends with Maggie Zubek. And I remember Ellen, Ellen not Ellen, <laughs> I remember Sue telling me that she really appreciated Brittany's connection with Maggie and that Brittany put up with the younger siblings. Um, <laughs> and I see, I just, I hope for my grandkids and great grandkids, whatever, it does matter who your friends are. Choose wisely, you know, because they do influence you. Um, our one grandson won the state championship at St. Francis Just a two weeks, weekends two week ago. Two, two weeks from today. And there's like three guys Yesterday. that he hangs with. They they skated like their whole younger career at St. Francis. I'm going to miss all four of those boys, not just my grandson, which is ridiculous, but they influence you, they impact. I thank the good Lord for the guiding light that I chose wisely. Love you, Kira. <laughs>The one thing, probably more than one, but one thing that I think most is important to me that mom and dad taught us is that family is everything. And I try to instill that in my kids that it doesn't matter how upset you are with them or um, how angry you are, at the end of the day, that's who you have. And um, they've witnessed that with, with me as well when I'm annoyed with one of my dear siblings and they will hear me vent about that but at the end of the day we'll see each other the next day and they see us hugging and kissing and loving on each other so um, that is one thing that thank you mom and dad for teaching us that truly family is everything and through thick and thin we are all we have and um, I'm really trying to make sure that my kids are aware of that as well and mom and dad thank you for turning an ordinary day into an extraordinary day with every little thing that we did. With Sunday, 7.30 a.m. mass, and then breakfast, coming home, we'd have to dust, we'd have to do our chores, our homework, but then we'd be done by 11 a.m. Can I tell you? Uh, since COVID, I'm not so good with that anymore, but those are the little things in life. Christmas Eve is not just Christmas Eve, it's breakfast with Pappy to go shopping for Mimi. Brittany's spring breaks at St. Joe's at Notre Dame. It was not just a spring break, it was a trip to Hilton Head Island with Bill and Jane. Every little thing, a hockey tournament, mom, you turned a hockey in tournament into a tradition that my family now carries, peanut M&Ms peanuts and M&Ms mixed as one, sitting on a hotel hallway. My hockey team can tell that entire story. One of the things that I'm grateful for uh, was mom and dad's commitment, uh, not, uh, not just to me, but to our family for um, travel hockey. It was through travel hockey that um, we as a family were able to have uh, experiences of, of new locations, experiences of commitment, um, and truly kind of what it meant um, to be a community. It was uh, families, not just, uh, not just uh, Jenny, Christy, Stephanie, Brittany, myself, um, but families within the community and it, it taught us um, how to be uh, how to be genuine how to be honest how to be um, competitive for sure um, and it was all those values that uh, we try to uh, instill in our own children today um, uh, fortunate enough to have three sons 
um, each of whom play travel hockey themselves. Um, dad, uh, dad always served as, uh, as our coach, uh, mom as his manager. And the two of them uh, were able to keep things running um, like a well-oiled machine. And happy to say that I'm doing all of those things myself. I'm coaching Joey's team, uh, coaching William's team. Uh, my wife, Carrie, serves as uh, the manager for, for both of those teams. I remember once when um, we were younger, really young, probably, I was, I don't know, maybe eight, and we were in Cleveland for something, and probably hockey, and we were driving down, it must have been downtown Cleveland, it was not a very nice part of town, and there was a man sleeping on the street, and um, dad made a comment about, um, how we should be thankful and grandpa Corey used to say but for the grace of god there go i and he taught us that and um said how lucky we were that that wasn't us because there were lots of people on the street roaming around um i was kind of scared frankly because we were not in a very good part of town but that saying has stuck with me forever and i feel like um mom and dad have always taught us how lucky we are by the way they have given back to the community, to um, to uh, so many different organizations and schools and um, to us in particular. And um, I guess the fact that we have been so blessed and that we need to make sure that we also give back. And I think that is a huge lesson that I have taken from mom and dad is that um, we need to remember how lucky we are and give back also um, because you just, you don't ever know. And um, our parents are the most supportive parents I've ever met. They never missed a game, a show, a performance, a choir concert, they did it all. And I think that that really extended into our friends and family as well. So I know that I had a number of friends who said that our kitchen island was always the place to be. If they ever were having a hard time or had an idea, they wanted to bounce it off of mom and dad. And I think that, you know, it just goes to show that they are loving, caring, accepting parents who have always just taken everyone into their home with grace and kindness. And I hope that that's what I can offer for my kids and their friends. And so mom and dad, I just say thank you. Thank you for never missing a show, for always supporting us in whatever we do. We couldn't do it without you. And, you know, I, I feel that um, we are able to, uh, to instill, you know, order and discipline, uh, responsibility, time management practices at all hours of the day, and how do you get homework done, and how do you get chores done? And there are many life lessons that I learned and that I'm able to apply today and, and put in use today. And it's for those things, not just the, uh, not just the training, not just the competition, not uh, simply the, the value of winning, but, but the life lessons um, are what's important. And, those are what, as an adult, you can carry over into the, the workplace and into your career and be a good teammate, be a good leader. And with, without, without the travel hockey component in my life growing up, I'm not sure that I would have those day-to-day -day skills. So for that, I'm extremely grateful and uh, love you. Happy anniversary. And um, thank you so much for um, giving me these experiences and um, allowing me the opportunity to share these experiences with my own children. You know, people say that I <laughs> try to capture every little moment and remember and savor 
And I guess I have to thank you, mom and dad, for that. You taught us to live in the moment and to turn every little thing into something special. My birthday for Pappy was a golf trip. <laughs> year after year after year. Mom, truly, every day through the toughest times of high school and college, you would have dinner on the table. And that's where I could sit down and discuss things or not. But you had an ear for all of us. So dad and mom, happy anniversary. Thank you for teaching me that every moment matters. I love you. That quote, that uh, Bible verse from Luke that says, um, to whom much is given, much is expected has always stuck with me because I feel like that is us and that mom and dad have lived that their whole lives and always given back, whether it's financially um, given back of their time, um, out their resources in any way they can. And I think that is something special that they have um, shown us how to do. And I hope that um, we can do, or I can do that and show my kids that um, that's something that we need to do also because we are very blessed and I am very grateful for them teaching us that lesson and for everything they have given us in that same way. Another, um, I guess, moral that has been very important to me is faith. And um, I don't necessarily mean church or even the Catholic school, I mean just truly believing in a higher power and um, knowing that we can pray to someone and look to someone and that there is a greater plan that we are unaware of and as we go through life we'll figure that out and to just always know that there's someone you can go to and speak to and pray to and um, it can be whatever your God is. So um, I feel I am deeply faith-rooted, not necessarily going to church as often, but definitely deeply faith-rooted and trying to make sure that my kids are, are, are doing the same. I love you, Mom and Dad. Thank you for all you've done for us.